Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out a product overview of our new contact instrument, Evoxa. So, Evoxa is a modern vocal chops engine for native instruments, contact. It comes with over 200 presets or patches for contact. It comes with about 200 actual chops and then some pad instruments as well. Now, the reason why we decided to make this product is because I have been using a version of this for about a year. I use Logic Pro X and importing vocals and assigning them to a sampler and assigning those samples to keys and having control over those samples on the key so I can play melodies with those chops or samples is a pain in the ass in Logic as it is in a lot of other DAWs. Ableton users have it easy. They can use Simpler or Sampler and they can kind of just manipulate the audio that way. But I use Contact a lot and I wanted to make an efficient, easy to use and really intuitive library of just vocal chops, vocal slices, vocal sounds, like gang haze and O's and all that sort of stuff. So that is what Evoxa is. Now, as popular as using vocal chops and vocal slices is in EDM right now, Evoxa is going to really help out for you guys who don't know how to chop up vocals or maybe you don't have a DAW or a sampler where it's really easy to do. So what we did was we created this interface here and gave you six different types of controls. You have the voicing, warp, modulation, portamento, reverb, and unison. And then we made a custom script to handle all of the backend information and how Contact's going to handle the samples that, that are either loaded by you or that were created by us. So there's an interesting little tidbit right there. We left the script open-ended. A lot of Contact libraries won't allow for this sort of thing. We wanted you guys to be able to drag and drop your own samples into Evoxa, into Contact, and still work with our script. So you could load up any sample. You could be a synth, a string, whatever, but it's designed for vocal chops, vocal slices, and you can load your own in. So it's completely expandable. It's not closed, but it does come with 200 really cool presets or patches for Contact. Now, this, we're going to do a little three-part video series to get used to and look at what Evoxa is and what it's capable of. This first video, I'm going to be discussing the GUI and the interface. And then the second video, I'm going to be playing through a bunch of the presets. The third video, I'm going to show you how you can use it in a production setting and then how to import your own samples. So let's get started. Now, if you're wondering what type of music Evoxa is good for, the answer is pretty much anything that you want to throw vocal chops into. So I've been using it a lot on future bass, trap, hip hop, pop, and Tropical House a little. So you could use it for Future House, you could use it for Melbourne Bounce, you could use it for any bounce genre, you could use it for Moombathon, really anything. It's just a bunch of chopped up mangled vocals. And if we look at the browser here, the 200 presets, some of them are called like, like just random names like Aggressive Vocals or uh, Back It Up. Some of them are called A or I or Hey. So there's a lot of gang vocals in here like O oh and Woos. And there's just a bunch of stuff. And they're actually, some of them la is labeled by genre. We have Deep House right there. We have Chopped Up Loops. So those are loops that have that chopped up feel. Great for hip hop. Uh, we have Deep House. We have just some random ones. We have EDM Chops, which are great for you, just general EDM. There are Future Bass Chops. There are Hip Hop. We have pretty much everything covered in the library. And just because it says Hip Hop, just because it says Future Bass, doesn't mean you can't use it interchangeably with different genres. We have a Jay-Z Woo. Hopefully he's not watching because I took Jay-Z's Woo. Uh, just tons of stuff. Melbourne. We got down here, we have um, Trap. Just really anything you could ever want for a vocal chop. Now, the, the layout here is the interface, and there are two different interfaces you'll see when you browse through the presets. So it is a contact library, but it is not a library that you can add to your library tab here because, for those of you who don't know, Native Instruments requires developers to pay a huge hefty license fee to allow you end users to register this with the NI Service Center. And I didn't want to do that, keep costs, that would make the cost of this library go way up. So I want to keep it accessible for everyone. So to navigate to your files, the easiest thing to do would be to just navigate to your files folder where you keep your sample libraries for contact. And you can see I have a Voxer right here. We have the contact and the vocal chops right there. So, so you can see I've navigated to Evoxa, contact, vocal chops, right? So we're going to go through some of these uh, tabs, I mean, some of these presets here and to, to, to discuss the difference in the interface. So you can see here we have voicing, warp, modulation, portamento, reverb, and unison. 
there are a few patches, probably maybe 10 or 15, that don't have the warp knob. The reason for that is these were loaded using a typical sampler algorithm where the sample gets sped up to increase the, uh, to, to make the pitch go higher or it gets slowed down to make the pitch go lower. And that's sometimes a really desirable effect, but other times for longer samples, we have this warp knob, which allows you to control the speed, the playback speed of the chop. So let's go through the interface. The first thing that uh, we have here, and I'll play on this preset here, we have the voicing knob. Now this voicing knob is going to work with the voices up here on contacts header. So if you want to play things polyphonically, what you can do is turn the voicing mode off and then you can turn your voices up to a higher voice count and you'll be able to play polyphonically. So let me uh, label this track real quick. Turn this down. So you can see that I can play chords that way. Now, this voice count is going to come back into play when you mess with the unison controls. But for now, let's take that back down to one. Now, on one, the script is set up to act kind of like a choke. So, so I'm going to hold down C2 and then play C3 above it. Do you hear how it's just triggering C3? Okay. Now, if we turn mono mode on and do that same thing, you'll notice that it'll play both C2 and C3. And hear how it's kind of gliding down to that? That's because we have Portamento on. Let's turn that off. So one's a choke, and one is just going to trigger whatever note's being held up in a monophonic fashion. Then we have Legato. So let me change the patch here, because this is too short of a patch to get to Legato. So let me turn the mode to Legato. Legato, what we have going on is uh, it won't re-trigger the phase, but it will move up or slide up to that note, depending on how much portamento or glide you have. And then we have an offset mode. Now, offset is going to is uh, kind of plays into this note priority and this release trigger. And there's a little write-up in the Evoxa folder that discusses that. I don't want to cover that in this video because I want to keep this video nice and short. So let's go back to that other uh, chop here. It's called Evoxa Aussie Chop. <laughs> All right, so we have the warp section over here, and this will speed up or slow down the sample playback rate. So if you reset it to 100% on this, or go down to here, so up at 800, it's very quick. Up at zero, it'll be very slow, and it'll actually kind of peg out on the wave part of the cycle or waveform that you're on and won't even really move. It sounds kind of glitched out and cool. Almost makes it kind of like a synth sound in a way. So that is what the warp knob does. And then of course you have the reset button here so you can reset back to its default value. Let's go to a different preset so we can, as uh, you guys can see, hear a little bit of the preset. Nice big grunt. All right, so you have, next you have the modulation section. And this has your typical controls, attack, decay, sustain, and release. Let's turn the release down. So even on something like this, where if I play the whole sample, you wouldn't think that that is potentially like a melodic chop, but it can be if you turn the release down. Be kind of a cool trap thing, maybe layer it with a big synth. Then you have the uh, sustain, which is typical controls. The attack's going to control me through all these, for those of you who don't know. The attack is going to, in milliseconds, determine how long it takes for the sample to reach its peak amplitude. The decay is going to be how long it stays up at that decay. And then the sustain is how long it's going to be moving towards the release. And is it going to be moving down in volume? Breath, 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 breath,
And then the re with the release all the way up, I can hit the note, let up, and it'll pretty much trigger the whole sample on this one. So that is the attack, decay, sustain, release controls. Let's go to another preset here. Now we have down here, we have the portamento. And this is just glide, right? So we have mode off, on, and auto. So when it's set to on, you can turn this time knob up to determine how much time. And then you have this uh, you have this mode where it will, will kind of do an auto mode. And it will essentially look at how you're playing it to see the time and if you're going to glide up or downwards. So that's kind of a cool, kind of a, you can get some weird results depending on how you set up your note priority up here in the voicing section. Now, moving over one more, we have, or more section, we have the reverb. And you have controls like pre-delay. You have size, which is going to determine the size of the of the room. Kind of like almost like a decay. Now this is coming from the convolution reverb engine inside contact. Then you have a dry, which you can layer with your wet if it's too much reverb. And I did this just to, because uh, it's kind of cool to have a little bit of reverb on these samples so they're not dry. I would strongly suggest using your favorite reverb. I, I like using Valhalla or even um, some of like Vengeance Reverb plugins, way more than the Contact Reverb because it's very outdated in my opinion, but we stuck it on there. Now, next we have the Unison Control. It'd actually be good to show you with this one. Okay, so like I said before, the to do, I, I mentioned that if you want to use the Unison Control, you're gonna have to give yourself more voices because it's gonna duplicate the voice count. So if we give this two voices, we need at least, if we're gonna play one or two notes, depending, we're gonna need either four or eight, uh, depending on how many notes you're playing, voices, but here's with two. And then you have spread and detune. So let's give it three voices here. It's another cool way to make some of these samples a little bit more synthy. And if we go back to, let's go back to uh, one that. Let's go back to this one, I believe. Actually, it was the was it the chop? Yeah, it's this one. Let's go back to this one and turn the warp down to zero. And then let's turn the voices up and then let's give it some voices of unison. So it's a really cool, you can get some really cool unique sounds depending on the sample and get kind of these big detuned unison style vocal chops. But there you guys go. That is the interface inside of Evoxa. And one last thing I wanted to touch on actually, let's say you need to tune it, but all these are in tune. That's the cool thing about Evoxa. They're all gonna be in concert pitch. So you can just start using them right away. Uh, if you do need to mess with the tuning at all, you have the tune knob right up here. Didn't need to make a knob down here for it, but it's all there for you. All right, guys, that sums up the look at the interface of Evoxa. I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to be playing a bunch of the presets. I'll see you there.